And by doing that, guys, this is more so the advanced stages of being able to determine, hey, how do I manage a patient who goes from no paresthesia to the paresthesia that I created? Yo, what up? It's a tip of the week, and this is part three of how to handle a paresthesia. Part one is how to let your patient know before and during the procedure what's going to happen. Part two was all about how to manage a paresthesia on post-op up until three weeks. And now, if you are the more advanced doctor and you want to show your guns, you want to show off a little bit, I don't recommend you do that for the sake of the patient. But if you have gotten to the point to where, hey, I want to go to that next level, I want to learn how to manage these cases, well, this is the tip for you. All right. So if you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Jared Williams. Before we go any further, I want you to smash the like button, hit subscribe, and share this information. The reason why this channel was created was simply so that doctors like you all around the globe can smile through surgery. I had some personal challenges when it came to doctors in my life, and I decided I don't wanna cry about it. I wanna make the profession and the world smile after surgery. So I created this channel. So if you are a dentist or a recent grad that loves surgery, but just wants to take it to that next level, this channel is just for you. All right. So stay tuned, get a notepad and let's get after it. All right. So this is part three of how to manage a patient who has paresthesia after three weeks. All right, guys, so in this video, like I said, we talked about where the teeth were. We saw how this infialveolar nerve is, oh my goodness, at the third molar passing through, then at the second molar, then at the first molar, and right at the tip of this second premolar. That's crazy. This is, I haven't seen anything as advanced as this. Like, this wasn't a case that I pulled off the internet. This was a case that um, one of the doctors that, um, that wants me to come to their office to do surgery, this is a case that they send me, so yeah. So I'm looking at this case, like I said, we're at part three. This is for doctors who are advanced in their training and they want to go a little deeper. Now this is at the four week mark, all right? Four week mark. At this time, you would follow up the patient at 24 hours, one week, three weeks, and then if it's still giving them challenges, this is the four week mark. Now, if you didn't refer them, it's okay. We still at the month mark. And typically speaking, the degeneration of nerves, if they're not treated within about three to six months, the prognosis starts dro dropping very, very, very rapidly. And so when you're seeing a case like this and you took out a tooth, let's just say it was this third molar, even the second molar, because as you can see, without a CT scan, we can't determine where this tooth is. I didn't mention this on part one or part two. Get a CT scan, guys. If you can't read it, have a pathologist look at it and determine what's going on, and then you're good. So I want to cover my bases. So I didn't get to talk about it in part one, part two, but now I spoke about it in part three. That's why it's so important to not be a squeezer. I got so much information for you. You may not, you may miss it. That's why it's so important to hit the subscribe button because these videos are going to come out, and I don't want you to miss my journey. And my journey is all about seeing all the pitfalls and all the problems and ducking them and watching them so that when they're coming your way, but oh yeah, Dr. Williams told me about that so I can smile at the surgery. I'm good. So part three. So here we are. So when you look at this case, um, at this juncture, the patient would have come to your office. It's four weeks. You're like, man, it's still not getting better. It's getting there, but it's still not right. There is a thing called nerve mapping. Before you do any of that, you're going to let the patient know, hey, we're going to do a little test. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover your eyes so that nobody's like, what the heck are you doing? You already get me numb. Now I'm going to run to cover my eyes. What else are you going to do? So you want to let the patient know, hey, let me cover your eyes so we can do a test. So you cover their eyes with a surgical mask, clamp the nose so that they can't see what's going on. Then you're going to let them know, hey, I'm going to get a permanent marker and I'm going to be marking on your face and don't be alarmed. Permanent marker wipes off with alcohol. If you want to use the other type of marker, that's fine. Or just any type of marker that you can mark on their face. Just make sure they're not allergic or um, they, are, they consent to it. Once you do that, you're gonna cover their eyes, cover their nose so they can't see, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your 23 Explorer and you're literally gonna poke them. And they're gonna say, hey doc, like this young lady, she had paresthesia on the left side, so, you're gonna, so you would look at her, she has her eyes covered, 
and you're gonna say, hey, with your 23 Explorer, does this hurt? And really, sticker. <laughs> Now, not to be sadistic, we're not. We're, this is not a movie or some crazy, yeah, some crazy movie, I'll leave it at that. I'll let y'all use y'all's imagination. It's not one of those type of movies where we're trying to inflict pain. All we want to do is test the integrity of the nerve in the area. And so what you're literally going to do is get a needle, get a needle. You could use a needle as well. You could use a 27 needle, it doesn't matter. Something sharp and soft. So you get the needle or a 23 Explorer and you just prick them. And you're not trying to pick prick them to, to, to get blood. You're just trying to determine, can they determine the difference between sharp and dull? So you prick them. If they feel it, then you could mark it. If they don't feel it, then just say, do you feel it? Do you feel it? They say, no, they feel it, no, feel it, no, feel it, no, feel it, yes. So you're at the midline. So what you'll do is you'll get the marker and you'll draw in the midline and you'll do the same thing. Feel it, no, feel it, no, feel it, no, feel it, no. So we're at the angle, so we're gonna take it and draw a marker all the way over here. And then what you're gonna do is just, you're gonna get the marker and you're gonna do the same thing. Feel it, no, feel it, no, feel it, no, feel it, no. All right, we found it. And by doing that, what literally is gonna end up happening is the individual is going to map out all the areas to where the numbness is not. As you can see right here, this is exactly what I'm referencing. You're just getting a, a marker and you're outlining this. Once you outline it, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a picture and put it in your notes saying, hey, this is what the patient looked like when they came to see me. And then what you're gonna do is this, you're gonna determine, and you could put, do different little markings as you see fit around the patient's mouth to determine, hey, did they feel sharp or dull? Sharp or dull? If it's sharp, then you could just do a, a straight line. If it's dull, you could do a spin pricks, however you want to do it, as long as you can map it out so you can see the difference between the start and the finish. Because that's what the specialists are going to do. They same, do the same exact thing. They're test it, give it some time. They're not going to wait long. If it's if they see there's no progression after they give them a steroid, they're going to take them to the OR, send it, refer them out so they could do the treatment as they see fit. And so that's the whole purpose of doing this nerve mapping because what ends up happening is you're going to see the progression go from here to here if we're getting that point then we're good to go and by doing that guys this is more so the advanced stages of being able to determine hey how do i manage a patient who goes from no paresthesia to the paresthesia that i created which is iatrogenic but because you went through the proper protocol letting the patient know you're good to go so there you have it guys. This was gonna be really straightforward, but let me just go ahead and resolve this story with the patient. So I told her, I was like, you know what? It's really unfortunate that that happened, but unfortunately, anytime I treat my patients, I always let them know, hey, there's a likelihood of having disturbance in your nerve. And when that happens, the patients are like, okay. Most of them are like, all right, move forward. Like they don't add, they don't query me any more than that. They're just like, all right, no problem. And when that happens, I'm like, cool. Now I can move forward. But I want to let you guys get this information. You're not going to use the word dis damage. You're going to use disturb. You're going to use steroids in the socket. You're going to follow up with the patient. And then you're also going to be comfortable and refer the patient out. And then what you're also going to do is this, nerve map them. It's very straightforward and simple. You're going to document that. You could give them a couple of, um, I would say give them another three to five days so that you're at that month mark. So at that one month and one week, they're like, okay. And then give them another couple of weeks, try it each week they're coming in and you're documenting on your phone or you could document with your cameras at your office, put in the chart, document, okay. The dotted lines mean they could feel soft. The sharp line, the straight lines mean they could do sharp. They can't feel sharp. However you document it, as long as it's documented. And then once you get to this point, when you send it to the surgeon, who is a specialist at nerve regeneration or repair, then they're gonna be like, man, this doctor is dope. Where'd they learn this crap from? I'm telling you, it happens all the time. Guys, when you refer out to a specialist, they're not gonna call you an idiot if you're helping them. But if you're just like, yo, give me something, I don't know, just no, there's no differential. Even if it's wrong, it's like, yo, just give us, give, give the individual something, give the profession something. It's not about them versus us or us versus them. Even though sometimes it's, it's placed that way, it's all about the patient. And when we put the patient in the middle and we want the best thing to happen for the patient, guys, 
That's how you smile after surgery. So there you have it, guys. I'm Dr. Williams. I want you to know that if you want to go deeper in surgery, what you could literally do is just go down below, click on some of the descriptions that we have here so that you get better in surgery. You want to do more implants and extractions. We got a course in there. Check it out. See how it can benefit you. But outside of that, I'm Dr. Williams. Once again, don't be a squeezer. Share this information. I'm not trying to get anything out of you outside of your greatness that's buried within. And so this channel is simply for you to get to that next level. So there you have it, guys. I'm Dr. Jared Williams, and my focus is for you, yeah, you, to smile after surgery. Make it a great one.